Surge pricing everywhere? So one of the big stories to come out of last week was Wendy's, the venerable hamburger chain, was thinking about using AI to create something like Uber-style surge pricing for their food. Now, if you're not familiar with Uber-style surge pricing, basically the way it works is that when it's busy, Uber will charge you more. When there's more demand, the price will go up, right? There's a change in the demand, so the price will go up. It's demand-based pricing. So what Wendy's wanted to do was implement something like that. So that different, different, depending on the time of day, and depending how busy it is, and depending how busy the store is and how much demand is for their food, the prices would change. Now, I don't remember what the details were of that specific element, but this is something that's been done for a long time. When you think about things like hotel rooms or airline tickets, I mean, this was started way back in the 80s, with I think the company was called BOAC, came up with the concept of revenue management or pricing management. And basically the way it would work and it was specifically designed to work with things that had an expiration date, like flights or hotel rooms, things that went, that expired because they were here, there was demand, and then they disappeared. Once the day went past, there was no demand for these products anymore. So it wasn't like an actual physical product where you could always make more, create more. These things literally disappeared. So a whole science came up behind absolute correct pricing. So the concept is, is that they would take into account every single factor around what something like a flight should be priced. What day of the week was it? What were the competitors' prices at the time? What was the weather like at the time? Which city is it going back and forth to? How many seats have already been sold, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So a ton of data about that particular airline seat, say, call it 9A, on this particular flight, on this particular day, the cost of the actual fuel, etc., thousands of variables were thrown into an algorithm, and then the algorithm would calculate the optimal price. And the optimal price would also take into account how much demand there was at that point. So in that specific moment when the price was being shown to the consumer on the screen when you're booking the flight, that price has been calculated to the minute, to the person, to the moment, to the date, to the time, to the weather, to everything around that particular flight. This is why when you're sitting on a plane and you ask your seatmate, hey, how much did you pay for this flight? And how much did you pay for this flight? I'm assuming I'm in the middle seat here. You're going to get different prices because the pricing management or the revenue management software basically selected a different price and presented a different price to the consumer depending on who was looking at it, when they were looking at it, all of these variables. So there's a whole science to this thing to pick a price that's absolutely correct, that is not too expensive that the customer won't buy, and it's not too low that the company won't make any money out of it. So it's a science. It's a science, there's algorithms, there's predictive analytics, there's tons of stuff behind that. And now there's AI behind that too. So there's all of this heavy, heavy machinery, big iron, so to speak, thinking about how to price a product. And like I said, it's working in things like the airline industry and the hotel industry. And this science is now starting to seep into other industries and it couldn't it wouldn't have been able to be doing it before the technology was available but now that the technology is available to be able to determine all of these factors only then can and uber has taken a leaf out of their book and used some of the elements for surge pricing that's why they call it surge pricing because they've increased the price when there's a surge in demand and it probably doesn't use that many variables as something like the airline model right so Here's a couple things about that. So it's great for the company. It's fantastic for the company because the company can pick a price that's profitable and at the same time make it at 
put it at the point where the customer will buy. It's low enough for the customer to buy and high enough for the company to make money. Now, the only problem with that is, so it's great for the company. Companies love it. But on the consumer side, we have no power to try and figure out. We, we don't have the big iron behind figuring out this price for us to be able to go in and pick the best price for us. We just have to go buy some kind of, it's like um, shamanism, figure it out, oh, is it Monday, is it Wednesday, do I fly midday? So there's some general rules, but because the pricing mechanisms are so sophisticated in this revenue management software, then there's no way to really know exactly what price you're going to pay. So this is the future of pricing. So this is not just going to be airlines and hotel rooms and other things that expire. It's going to be everything, right? I mean, I know Kohl's is using this thing now where they have at each display an LCD panel. And the LCD panel mentions the product and it mentions the price, right? So right now, when you walk through Kohl's, the prices all stay pretty much the same, except maybe maybe once a day they go in and say, oh, this is uh, selling well, let's increase the price a little bit, or this is selling poorly, let's decrease the price a bit a little bit. But it'll get to the point, folks, where as you're walking through the store, it detects who you are. It knows generally what income bracket you are in, and it just might, as you're walking up to the price, if you're in a higher income bracket, bump it up a little bit because it knows you can spend a little bit more. Maybe somebody in a lower income bracket walks up to it and it goes down a little bit. Maybe certain genders have different prices. Maybe certain races have different prices. Maybe everybody gets a different price depending on who's walking past at the time. And that's what it's gonna be like at Wendy's. It'll be like you walk into Wendy's, you walk up to the front, you key in your information and it'll look at you and go, oh, you are this person this is how much you earn, this is what you're like, this is what you eat, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to charge you $13 for a hamburger. And the guy who steps up behind you, completely different person, I'm going to charge you $8 for a hamburger. Because maybe it look back at your last year's tax returns and go, hey, that guy makes a lot of money. He'll, he can afford a $13 hamburger. But this guy, he doesn't. he's just like a poor student. He, only, he can only afford an $8 hamburger or a $5 hamburger. Or maybe we'll give it to him for free. Who knows? This is the future of pricing, folks. This is where we're going. And the sad part, like I said, is that we human beings, we have to try and figure this out on our own. We don't have any big iron. We don't have a personal AI to help us figure out where we can get the best price. We have to do it all on our own. So it's a great thing for companies, not so much for consumers. But this is the future of pricing. So you hear about Uber and, and Wendy's and other companies like this thinking about surge pricing. It's going to be everywhere soon. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future.